So now the paracetamol is uh, widely consumed by all of us but uh, definitely at a lethal dose definitely it causes damage to the liver. Hi friends, today we will be discussing on paracetamol poisoning or acetaminophen poisoning. As we know paracetamol is one of the commonest drug what we see in and around any of the pharmacies or hospitals for fever. So uh, why this paracetamol has been very common and uh, why it has been uh, uh, so lethal to the body well, today we will try to learn about more about it. So now the paracetamol is uh, widely consumed by all of us but uh, definitely at a lethal dose definitely it causes damage to the liver. Now today I will present you few case scenarios in which we can learn more about it. We had a patient of 50 year old female who had a history of consumption of unknown drugs over the counter. She took some medications of 30 tablets around and when she came her heart rate was around 134, her respiratory rate was 35, saturation was maintained around 86 on room A, BP was 160 bar 80, pupils were 6 millimeters of dilatation was noted. So uh, this was like multi-drug abuse and uh, definitely we had to uh, differentiate between uh, the drugs whatever she has conceived. Uh, when she brought the, um, the relatives brought the strips we tried to found that right? the 30 tablets were a tablet named as Vicodin. Vicodin consists of chlorpheniramanil and 2 milligrams plus paracetamol 500 milligrams and phenylephrine of 5 milligrams. So in total for the 30 tablets you know that the paracetamol was 500 milligrams into 30 it becomes 15 grams so if you consider that particular person around 50 kgs so the paracetamol has overtly gone beyond the level of metabolism in the body so there is more than 200 milligrams per kg hence the paracetamol poisoning has to be taken into very serious level now, now we will learn what happens in the paracetamol toxicity. Paracetamol or acetaminophen, APAP, I will make it as APAP, acetaminophen gets converted into a N acetyl P benzoquinone quinone imine which we call as NAPQI. So this radical we have to remember very very thoroughly. Now acetaminophen if it has been converted with the help of CYP that is our cytochrome P40 or P2E1 with, with this cleavage uh, once it has been converted to an NAPQI N acetyl P benzoquinone imine this is converted back into a non-reactive or non-toxic metabolite with the help of glutathione glutathione pathway so there will be cysteine conjugates there will be sulfonic conjugates all these conjugates will definitely convert NAPQI into non-toxic material but what happens once it keeps accumulating if the level keeps on or the NAPQI if it increases beyond what is needed then what happens is it will go for hepatocellular necrosis. So that is where we are more concerned with. So NAPQI is one of the end product of uh, parastomol and NAPQI gets uh, detoxified or it has been converted into smaller uh, non-toxic metabolites with the help of glutathione. Glutathione has its own pathway. It is a long pathway. Just we remember that the glutathione with the help of GC, GSH medium we tend to convert it into, into cysteine conjugates and metapuric conjugates which are very non-toxic and could be excreted through the urine as well as the uh, liver. So uh, feces I mean. So once acetaminophen if it doesn't go into NAPQI level, it can be directly converted into a sulfate or glucuronide metabolites and it can be also been excreted through feces. Acetaminophen, a small fraction gets excreted through urine as well. So we now we know that if we don't allow acetaminophen 
to increase more than the prescribed values in the body definitely the, it could be excreted either by urine or it could be definitely converted into non metabolite non toxic metabolites inside the body so that is how the paracetamol toxicity matters to us this is a, a monogram what i meant to say cytochrome cytochrome p450 with cyp2e1 cyp182 and cyp3a4 these are all related with glutathione so acetaminophen of fen gets converted into hepatotoxic napqi if you don't have glutathione reserve if you have a glutathione reserve if you get glutathione reserve in your body acetaminophen of fen will be converted into non toxic conjugate of napqi and it will be excreted through urine and there will be renal excretion of APAP that acetaminophen will be directly excreted through the renal then as I shown in the picture either it can go into sulfate metabolites or in a glucuronide the metabolites directly with the help of metabolic cycles so that is how so we now know that glutathione is one of the keyword NAPQI is one of the keyword and then there comes a non-toxic metabolites remember these are the basic keywords you have to remember during a paracetamol poisoning so once a paracetamol poisoning has been confirmed and the patient has consumed more than 200 or you don't know the amount of uh, paracetamol being consumed by the patient then what we do is we tend to divide the time hours or timeline of the drug consumption so if it is less than four hours post ingestion then what we do is we tend to plot a monogram if it is between four to eight hours we plot a monogram and we also assess for the immediate paracetamol concentration levels now the paracetamol to get absorbed into the systemic circulation it takes around four hours that's why only after four hours we tend to have the concentration level assessment for the paracetamol now if the paracetamol has been consumed beyond eight hours then we start with n acetylcysteine nac and immediate paracetamol concentration is been assessed then we plot the monogram then reduce the paracetamol moments and n acetylcysteine infusion if paracetamol poisoning starts reducing keeps on reducing at that moment we do it so what is this monogram monogram is just a pictorial presentation in which in the x-axis we have the time and hours mentioned the y-axis shows the blood paracetamol concentration so first four hours that is the time of consumption to the four hours we don't have assessment at all because it takes time four hours post only we get to tend to get a proper value for the paracetamol assessment so once the value has been assessed if anything anything about this now if i imagine that the patient has been having a value of around 1000 1500 micromoles per liter of paracetamol definitely it's a high dose of paracetamol so you start with nac now and if it keeps on dipping down it dips down like this so you tend to reduce the NAC level so that is how you tend to do it okay. now toxicity can occur in a single day or it can occur during the days of treatment or within a few weeks of span so in that particular context also we consider if a paracetamol has been consumed with due to deliberate self-harm the patient has consumed beyond 200 milligrams as per our case so that is uh, definitely needs a treatment if the patient has consumed paracetamol in doses so forgetting about the patient might be having higher dose of fever and uh, he could not control it so he was consuming the uh, paracetamol without knowing the uh, adverse effects of paracetamol toxicity that could be attributed 
or the persons who have been addictive towards a paracetamol for headache and hence over a period of 72 hours if they are consuming more than that that more than 100 milligrams per kg per day definitely these patients if they are in these categories we tend to start the treatment as early as possible and every second day or every day we tend to measure the lenin transmittase or the liver function test we tend to measure and so that we try to understand that whether any transamine uh, elevation or transamine is elevation is noted within the liver or the enzymes within the liver has been maintained or not these are the things what we tend to concentrate upon so if there is no enzyme elevation of the liver enzymes are not been elevated and uh, you find tend to find the liver is healthy enough even after two to three days of evaluation definitely your treatment has been successful enough so what is the level of dosage simple thing to remember is nac should be given at the dose of 200 milligrams per kg at the first dosage and second dosage should be including 100 milligrams per kg that's all just remember this particular wordings that 200 milligrams in the initial first stage and second stage should be included around 100 milligrams first stage will be given for four hours and next 16 hours will be given with 100 milligrams this goes for any patients who or any ch children or any adolescents group you tend to measure the um, cages and tend to give it accordingly here we have mentioned about the fluid infusions that could be done according to the predicted body weight so in a person who is the adolescent group the where the age weight is also 20 to 40 remember the first dose goes for 200 milligrams and then second dose goes for 100 milligrams and according to predicted body weight we have a calculation for fluid assessment so uh, 20 to 40 remember 20 to 40 kilos you measure imagine you give 500 ml maximum for a patient who is more than 40 kgs you tend to have one liter if that is a child if uh, the well, child is underweight or the weight is lesser than 20 remember 20 200 ml that's very simple calculation to remember 20 200 ml you can add another 50 ml so within 250 ml we tend to give in the similar way that is you give 200 milligrams per kg initially for four off then you give second second 100 milligrams per kg for next 16 hours that is how you tend to give the infusion so first question acetaminophen toxicity increases by the following factors except decrease of the glutathione stores inhibition of enzyme cyp2e in the liver frequent dosing intervals prolonged duration of excessive dosing so what could have happened like acetaminophen toxicity increases by the following factors how the first thing what you remember was there was two pathways being broken this way one is towards our glutathione if it is not there or the glutathione if it is present if the glutathione is very much reduced then definitely the toxicity is very high and there will be accumulation of any dpqi so napqi accumulation occurs the toxic napqi occurs more if there is no glutathione stores within the body so those individuals will have irreversible hepatic necrosis and the hence will face the issues related to acetaminophen toxicity what are the dialysable substances except definitely remember one one thing to remember here is barbiturates definitely yes you can dialyze them opiates that becomes a question mark salicylates yes definitely it can be dialysis alcohol yes as we told in the previous uh, classes methanol for toxicity dialysis is the only way we can help it so the answer comes as opiates so dialysable substances if you are having an mcq what are the dialysis substance barbiturates salicylates alcohols can be dialyzed whereas opiates cannot be dialects 
coma cocktail. What is a coma cocktail? Coma cocktail is uh, one of the way with which we try to introduce into the body whenever a patient comes with the unknown drug poisoning and the patient is comatose. So the drugs used in here would be uh, naloxone, we use oxygen and we use thiamine. So only drug which we don't use is pyridoxine. Pyridoxine is used in the later stages of the treatment. Hence, so along with these uh, molecules, we tend to also add a D5 water or DNS, dextrose normal saline or D5 water. So dextrose is one of the cocktail being included along with naloxone, oxygen and thiamine if a patient is brought into you with a history of unknown drug poisoning and the patient is comatose. Thank you. Dokumenta.